making a DAO genie for D&D. &D. I did this project while my smartphone was on the blink. It had crazy screen judder so I couldn't film anything. So I hope this short series of stills with me talking will be of some use or some interest to someone out there. Eight months ago I made an Earth Elemental. You can see him on the DM Scotty's Crafts and Games Facebook group if you scroll all the way back to April 2016. If you do a search in that group on the words Earth Elemental in quotes, you'll find that fairly quickly, along with a number of other people's Earth Elemental conversions. I use this figure on the right here. I got him on eBay. He cost about three or four pounds, including postage, and came from China in a couple of weeks. Now he's apparently the sidekick of a superhero called Green Lantern. Someone told me his name, but my brain has obviously decided to flush that information. And Green Lantern came totally unwanted with him in the same packet. So I stuck him behind a plant pot on the windowsill and I forgot all about him. Here very quickly is that Earth Elemental project. Here's the figure with the hot tree glued on. Here he is covered with crumbled up dry clay. Here he is painted with gloopy acrylic. The trees protected at this stage and the face is left bare for more detailed painting. And here's the finished project, an earth elemental who's just emerged from below the ground surface, bringing up turf and a tree with him. The scene in which he played a part went well. It was a successful adventure. And then eight months passed, and for another group of adventurers in another land, this time a medieval Egypt come Arabian Nights type setting, I needed a Tao. Now what is a Tao, you may ask? A Tao is a genie. Your bog standard or noble genie, like the ones in Aladdin, are made from the element of air. But there are also ones which are made of all four elements, and are specific to fire, water and earth. They are the Jan, the Afreti, the Marid and the Tao respectively. I struggled to actually find a good image of a DAO to use as a design prompt, uh, but eventually I found this one on the fourth edition D&D &D wiki. Annoyingly the artist is uncredited. Um, I play my own amalgam of first and second edition because that's better than anything that came later, but in fourth these creatures are apparently dubbed Genasi. Uh, all of the mythologies and interpretations will differ in detail, you'll find. Uh, but the Tao here was very much to my liking. Uh, I liked his colour scheme and the way he differed from an earth elemental by having the luxurious jewellery and the intense stare, uh, despite the fact that he still had uh, dirt and, and ragged clothing. And that's when I remembered Green Lantern. Um, he, his quiff got taken straight off with a craft knife uh, before I even thought to record the stages of this build. Now, there are a couple of things to notice. I don't know the story of Green Lantern, but he looks like an anatomical model of the human musculature. Perhaps he lost all his skin and fat in a hideous nuclear accident or something. I don't know, but his, his arms look too thin from the front and too wide from the side due to the way the biceps have been distorted and he's got no groin bulge, so it looks like the poor chap has lost his crown jewels in that accident also. In addition, he's an, ax he's an action figure, and the human arms don't actually rotate like that, so when his arms are in any other position, uh, they look completely wrong. So uh, here I've already glued them into position by trickling in some super glue. Now the build proper. He's stuck on a bit of recycled cardboard. It's that colour because it was the canopy of a building in the previous adventure. Um, I don't have any storage space, so a lot of my terrain is made, used for a game, and then dumped. Twice recycled corrugated card in this case. And yes, he does actually look like a male stripper in this image. That's because what was left in my hot glue gun was glitter glue from making Christmas decorations. But that groin bulge needed building up, and you can see that there's more glittery hot glue around the base to conceal the corrugations. And finally I found a charm uh, from a mixed bag, just a pound or two on eBay from China. It's actually a sort of Art Nouveau heart-shaped, locket-shaped charm. Uh, but it will be upside down and when the little loop is filled, uh, hopefully it won't look like a heart. 
some of his mask has been chipped away with a, a craft knife. It was only a fraction of a millimetre proud of the face, but where it was proud I trimmed it back so it will uh, hopefully disappear when painted. Then I noticed that our kitchen roll has this nice texture, so that's going to be great for the clothing if I can cut and fold it to avoid the logo. The texture probably doesn't show in the photos on the final painted figure, but I can see it in real life. Here my phone was freaking out so badly that I couldn't even check the image, so I'm sorry about it being out of focus. But you can see that I've built up the arms using Milliput. Uh, that's a two-part epoxy putting, putty, just what I had laying around any air-dry modelling compound would have done. And I've sculpted on the lines of those gold shoulder straps, uh, which have saved me from having to bother to fill the gaps around the once-rotating arm sockets. And the paper towel is going on with a slightly watery PVA adhesive. I'm using it liberally to tone down his exposed musculature by letting it run uh, into the detail. The charm's been added. The whole thing spray painted black. I just use the cheapest possible black undercoat uh, as usually sold for car repairs. And I've begun painting the skin. He's going to appear in a Sahara Desert type landscape so I'm making him sandy coloured rather than using the burnt umber skin colour of the inspiration image. I had trouble getting the colour I wanted for the trousers and skirt like garment as well sometimes colour mixing just doesn't go to plan uh, but the fun of painting a cheap model like this is that you can always paint over it for a second attempt and here he is finished. Uh, the stubbly bits of hair were just tiny bits of black cotton placed with tweezers and superglue. He stands 100 millimetres tall to my 25 and 28 millimetre characters. Evaluation is important, uh, so I decide looking at this I'm pleased with him, though I wish I'd have had some play sand or silver sand for the base. This is horticultural sand, which is almost the best you can use for basing, as it has variable particle size. But in this case it's just wrong for the sand dune type of look that I wanted. The other thing to know about Dow, by the way, is that their alignment is evil. And this chap is going to be encountered by a party of first level adventurers. They're not going to be able to fight him, but he's going to have so much fun messing with them. My name is Lawrence Tilly. I hope you've enjoyed the slideshow.